This video will be about a theoretical derivation of the ideal gas law, and we're going to see that by thinking about a particle bouncing off walls in a box, that we can arrive at the ideal gas equation PV equals nRT. So let's take a look at some of the properties of this particle. This particle is going to have mass m and velocity v sub x. The subscript x is there because first we're going to consider the movement only in the x direction. This means that the particle has a momentum m times v of x. Now what we're concerned with is we're concerned with the force this particle exerts as it hits the walls of the box. And we know from physics that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Acceleration can also be defined as the change in velocity over the change in time. And when we substitute this definition of acceleration into the above equation, we arrive at this expression. Notice here that the numerator, mass times the change in velocity, can be further defined as the change in momentum. So by finding these two quantities, the change in momentum and the change in time, we can find the force that the particle exerts on the walls of the box. So as before, we have change in momentum over change in time. So starting with the change in momentum is simply the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Now, if the initial momentum is m times v x, when the particle hits the wall of the box, it's going to return in a perfectly elastic collision, which means that no energy is lost, which means that it's going to return with the same velocity, but in the opposite direction. So the initial velocity is going to be m times v of x, and the final velocity is going to be m times v of x, but with a negative sign to represent that it's the opposite direction. So when we simplify this, we get that the change in momentum is simply negative 2 mvx. And this is the sort of change in momentum with respect to the particle. Since Newton laws holds, Newton's laws are going to hold in this model, with respect to the wall, the change in momentum is simply an equal but opposite reaction, which would just be 2 mvx. So let's now solve for the denominator, delta t. Delta t comes from the expression for velocity, which is the change in distance over the change in time. We can rearrange this equation to solve for delta t as the change in distance over the velocity. The change in distance here is going to be the distance between successive collisions with the same side of the box. So this is a box, or a cube rather, with all sides L. When the particle hits this wall, it's going to travel L and then travel back L again before hitting the same side of the box. So the total distance traveled is going to be 2L. So we have this expression for delta t. We can rearrange this to find that 1 over delta t is the velocity divided by two lengths of the box. So here what we're going to do is we're going to just take those two quantities we solved for and plug them back into this force equation. So momentum and change in time, change of momentum, change in time, gives us these quantities, 2mvx and vx over 2L. The twos are going to cancel, and it simplifies to mvx squared over L. Now this is just for one particle. And you can see how our little model has changed because we are going to uh, add some additional particles into the, into the box. So if the force for one particle is this, the total force is simply going to be the sum of the individual forces from all different molecules. Now, if we assume we have n, n different molecules, they all have the same mass, right? And they're all traveling in the same box, so we can factor out this m over l. But we have, may have different velocities, or different squared velocities for each particle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the average squared velocity. So this little bar will represent average. So we sum up all the individual velo squared velocities and divide by the total number of particles, n. Multiplying both sides by n gives us that the number of molecules times the average square velocity is simply the sum of the individual square velocities. And since this expression here is equal to this expression, we can take this n times the average square velocity, substitute it back into our force equation to get this expression. The total force is simply equal to the total number of particles times their mass times their average squared velocity divided by the length of the box. So where do we go from here? Well, we have the force as this expression here. So we can relate force to pressure through the following equation. Pressure is simply defined as force per unit area. 
Since this is a cube of length L, the area of any side of the box is simply length squared, substituting this in for the for substituting this in for force and this in for area, we get the following expression, which will simplify to L cubed in the denominator. But L cubed, length times length times length, when it comes to a cube, is going to be the volume of the cube, V. Now if we multiply both sides by V, we're finally getting somewhere that looks like the ideal gas law. So we have PV on this side and this expression on the right hand side. So we're about halfway there. Now, so far we only considered uh, particles moving in the x direction. So now we have some particles that are moving in any which direction we choose. So the arbitrary velocity, v, can be decomposed into its three components, its x, y, and z vectors of the velocity. But there's no reason to believe that any of the particles have a preference for direction, so we can just assume that these three quantities are equal. So if they're equal, we can represent the arbitrary squared velocity as a sum of three of these, like so. Dividing by three gives us this expression here. And then when we plug this back into the expression we had from the previous page, we get this expression, PV equals one third MB squared. So far we have this side, but we're still missing temperature on this side. So where is temperature? I guess more important question here is what do we consider temperature? So if we think about temperature, we can usually think about kinetic energy. Now, there are two different ways to think about kinetic energy. One classic way to think about kinetic energy from physics is simply 1 half mv squared. But the equipartition theorem gives us another way to think about uh, uh, energy, and it relates it to temperature. So here, kinetic energy is defined as the number of degrees of freedom a molecule has divided by 2 times the Boltzmann constant times its temperature. And these two different uh, measures of kinetic energy have to equal. So we have the expression 1 half mv squared equals 3 halves kT. 3 comes from the 3 degrees of freedom, the 3 ways the particle can move in the box, um, from uh, the, the moving particle. So we're almost there. We just have to figure out how to plug temperature into this equation. Now, what's going to happen is the following. We have to do a little bit of trickery to rearrange this to what we need. So here's our expression from before. PV equals one-third nmv squared. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply and divide by 2. So we're multiplying by 2 here, dividing by 2 here, so nothing's changed. But now we have something that resembles that 1 half mv squared. And what we're going to do with that, from before, we know that 1 half mv squared is equal to 3 halves kT. Plug that in. And then we notice that this 2 and the 1 third gives us 2 thirds. And then this 3 halves from here, these will cancel out and become 1. And we're left with PV equals nKT. But then we realize that if we define uh, the way the gas constant is defined R, it's simply Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann constant. So rearranging, solving for K, we get R over Avogadro's number. Plugging K into this expression, we get the following. PV equals number of molecules over Avogadro's number times R times T. And the total number of molecules divided by the number of molecules in a mole will simply be the number of moles in the gas. So if we substitute little n, which is the number of moles, we arrive at the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. Pressure times volume is the number of moles, the amount of the gas, times the gas constant, times the temperature. All of that from a particle in a box.